Thank you, everyone, for uh, staying around after the film, Chaco. Uh, my name is Ernie Quiroz, head programmer at Cine Las Americas. Uh, so glad to be talking to the writer and director of the film, uh, Diego Mondaca. Diego, thank you so much for joining us uh, all the way from Bolivia, no? Yes, I'm from Bolivia. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you, the festival. It's a great honor to be uh, in your festival with my work and my first future film. And uh, it is very special to show uh, this film for all the community there, as I told you before, for the Latin people, for the all the uh, Afro-American people because this film also talks about immigrations and also talk uh, also had a special point in the in the that that population who is still fighting for 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 being in this world right so yeah, thank you there, yeah well congratulations there's 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 so much to get to uh, in the film all the kinds of issues and themes but I just wanted to congratulate you on the film on um, uh, played at Rotterdam, played a number of, of very well-respected festivals all over the world, and um, was the Oscar submission for Bolivia uh, for your first film. So congratulations so much for all that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Was, yeah, we, we, we were working, say, like uh, seven years in this film. So we were writing uh, word by word and thinking many, many things and doing a lot of research. And I'm so happy to have a, a very good team around me uh, because we made this film together. And that's important for me because uh, the, this issue, the, the, the Chaco war, is not too easy. And it will be easy if you take just the history facts. But we are trying to, to understand the consequences of the facts in this moment, today, in my country, and also in sometimes in, in, the, in the region, Latin America. And also it's an echo in, uh, in states, in Europe, as you said, in another festivals, in, for example, in Rotterdam or in Spain or in, in Germany, the people are able to identify with the, the, the human situations, you, you have an, an special uh, identification as a human because you know how you are. So you still, you have, you scare you in a way because you know that you can, you can, you can have that kind of actions today. Mm -hmm. or you watch that kind of actions today in your world, in your family, in your society. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone, I mean, sadly, that's that's one of the universal themes uh, in the film is sort of just the madness of war, the futility of war, um, and just um, how in a lot of, in a lot of ways um, humans are, we're our own worst enemy, and uh, and there's, you know, there's a lot going on. Talk about um your personal connection to the Chaco war uh because didn't your um your grandfather fought in the war right is that, yes. is that why you wanted to one of the reasons why you wanted to make the film yeah basically we started i started for from from my grandfather from my memories of my grandfather because uh, he was part of the war he was a uh, Le petit soldier, as I, I really like to say, because he was so young. As uh, all all the soldiers there, all the all the youngest Bolivians were there, and they back home uh, mutilated uh, his own spirits and the bodies was completely mutilated. So. Uh, the silence of my grandfather, because he he doesn't like to say, to talk about the word, to talk a lot about the word. Uh, the silence is, for me, the main uh, expression of the horror. Uh, they they were he was not allowed. He was not uh, not allowed. He was not able to talk about the horror that he was he was part. In, in the end. So uh, we started for that kind of memories and, and we started for the horror, the memories and the, and how to, how to manage that. How can I manage as a, as a grandchild? How can I manage the horror of my grandfather? But it's not, also, it's not only for my grandfather, it's the horror of my country. Uh, 
because we still have the same problems that we had on the 30s. We have today, we have the same problems. We still have the same problems. So I don't know if, if the humans, uh, we are, we are so technolo techno, techno humans. No, we have everything. We have online communications, but we are still fighting. Well, we have a very strong problems. You, you have very strong problems in states. We have very strong problems in Israel, Palestine, and we have still really strong problems here in Bolivia. So the world is not good. And the pandemic, it's also also an evidence that we are not prepared for any, any, for any war. And we are not prepared as a society because we don't trash each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the point. We, we started from my grandfather and we developed all this film because we know each other, as, as I said before. Talk about, um, for people that don't know uh, a little bit about the war or don't know what it's like in Bolivia, can you help maybe give some context of, of you know, the war was, was 70 years ago, so it, in a lot of ways, still recent memory, uh, mm -hmm. and like you said, still things that are, are dealing with, but it seems like, um, you know, the, the war has sort of been forgotten and sort of been... Um, deliberately so uh, so can you maybe yeah. talk about that uh, and talk about how important your film is to to have people understand and connect to what happened 70 years ago or yeah years ago? It's, yeah it's very important your your question because not all the people uh knows about this word and that was uh that was a uh, a problem when I when when I was developing the project because I need to expl explain the the reasons of the word I need to explain I need to tell them to the people out of Bolivia of course and that we had a war we had a war against the Paraguay uh, we were looking for the gas uh, we were looking for the another way to to get to the sea because we lost uh, uh, some some years before uh, against Chile, and but the the curious curious things is that uh, that war was a camp of of uh, rehearsal for the another nations. Uh, I must say for the England. I must say for the Germans, because they 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 make a special rehearsal for, with the arms. And uh, the Hans Kunt, uh, the German general that we have a, a German general in the film, um, the inspiration is Hans Kunt. Hans Kunt is real. Hans Kunt came to Bolivia, called it with my government, and he has he he he, he was the the main uh, the main uh, person uh, in front of the war. So he was a German at that time. He, they were uh, Prussians and they came to be uh, Nazis. So they make an, a very, very many small uh, exercises, the small rehearsals with our people, with our country, with our, uh, our problems <laughs> in a way. So uh, no, but no, no more too much people know these things, but we need to discover this because uh, we need to put on the table because the official history uh, always wants to to put the hero in the front to, to put who was the the main uh, the main important person on the main important fact just for the political uh, just for the for the people who is in the in the power in the time mm -hmm. so uh, and that's that's a strong reason for 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 making a special research you know, we need to understand that Bolivia was a part of uh, some very, very uh, dark uh, rehearsals. Yeah, so, uh, proxy proxy war, I think is what, yeah. Um, and there's also issues of, of race and class of the, because yes. you have the indigenous uh, soldiers, you have the, the Quechua, uh, you have all the different tribes uh, and sort of... Um, and you do a good job of everyone speaking their own language and sort of uh, 
and that contributes to this fog of war or this, you know, uh, the horrors of the war uh, where they can't even communicate with each other. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that, of the indigenous role um, yeah. the people had uh, in, that, in the war? Yeah, that idea begins from the misunderstanding because uh, Bolivia has at least uh, 36 uh, uh, groups, indigenous groups. So means 36 languages, 36 cultures. So, and uh, if you want to put all of them together, they came from another parts. They, they understand the, the, all the space in different ways. And for, for uh, it's not too easy to, to, to have a good communication. And they are in a, in a limit situation in the, in the war. You need to fight with somebody. They, they doesn't know who was the Paraguayans, for example. Mm -hmm. Until now, I just know five or six uh, Paraguayans in my life. So you can imagine how I was in, in the 30s. So um, uh, the language is very important for trying to dry, dry, uh, in, for drawing the misunderstanding because uh, Quechua and Aymaras and Guaranese and Spanish uh, talkings and the German need to understand for do something together but they don't, don't find any, any channel for communication because they come from other cultures. And there is a di dialogue in the film, uh, Liborio says, uh, Capitan, we are not from here. You and me, we are not from here. Yeah. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's true. I'm not from here, he's not from here, and we, we are fighting for something. Mm -hmm. And we don't know the enemy. We don't know the, the land. So that is the hilarious thing in the world. But that was real. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the most important thing is that was real. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are still fighting. We're still having that kind of fightings in this world. So um, that, that's, that and the racism and the classism, it's also an uh, important issue because at that time, my country was completely racist, completely classist. And, but we, we work in that. We, I think, uh, I'm sure we, we develop more and we are not too racist, but no, we're not too classist, but we still, uh, we still have a, uh, uh, strong manifestations of racism and classism. And, and we saw this in the last year here in Bolivia. Yeah. So, um, Can you talk a little bit about, I think most people probably know Evo Morales and remember when he was elected and sort of, um, you know, being an, an indigenous uh, man. Have things changed? Uh, did things change when he was elected? And, and obviously he's no longer in power and things are changing. But how have things changed uh, in general, but maybe also um, sort of dealing with the war and coming to terms with the war? Yeah. Well, we need to recognize, recognize that Evo Morales, uh, in my point of view, was one of the best presidents that we ever had. The first thing, but because was our president, this means, means was elected and, uh, and democratical uh, action. And uh, the country 15 years ago was another country. And now, now the, our people uh, walk in the streets, trank, um, tranquila, uh, really quiet and, peaceful. and calm. Peaceful. Peaceful, peaceful. And, and the white people uh, is, is starting to understand that they are not the people from Bolivia. Mm -hmm. So they need to understand that the country is our country. And we need to understand that before us, uh, yeah, before and uh, after, no, before us, there are a lot of cultures uh, very strong cultures, and is, it is also our culture. Mm -hmm. So we started on uh, an work of recogn recognizing, we started to recognize our country as a, our country, not an imitation of, 
of another models of countries, for example. Mm -hmm. So now we we have our things. We still have our problems. We we still have many many problems. Evo Morales was Evo Morales was not the solution for nothing, but was the person, the people, and all the government who tried to. Um, to put in the table another country, to put on the table another persons, the Bolivians, the indigenous, in the center of the problem. And so that's the very important thing in Bolivia. And, and for me, Bolivia, it's too much better than the than 10 or, or 15 years ago. So and Bolivia now it's a country that many people wants to wants to know how it works. Bolivia. Many people from another another countries came to Bolivia for understand many things that they they miss it in in, in his countries. So in that terms, uh, for me, uh, as I said, Evo Morales was a very good president. Of course, in the end, in the last years, Evo Morales and all the the structure of the mass the the was going down because the the problems of the power, the problems of the to to be in the power a long time, mm -hmm. it's a mistake yeah. because because you you lost the contact with the people, yeah. you lost your roots, yeah, and that's the risk all the time. We we need to be very carefully with that because uh, we are losing, we are losing uh, our roots. Yeah, you, you you lose touch. You go from being the outsider to now yeah. you're the you're the power structure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, go back back to the film. Uh, talk about what was it like to shoot uh, the film <laughs> in in that region? You know, in the Chaco, uh, <laughs> where where the war. I mean, ninety years ago. It's still, it's still, even with all the technology, I can still imagine it's still a difficult place just to shoot and sort of work. Uh, yes. Can you talk about that? It <laughs> was a great adventure and uh, was so, so good. I mean, means uh, the Chaco region, all, the, all the, 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 the landscape is the same, the same like uh, 18 years ago. Uh, that's impressive, but at the, same, at the same time, the Chaco, the Chaco forest changed a lot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, looks the same, but it's not the same, all the, all the shots, you know? And uh, we, we needed to, to shoot in the winter because the Chaco region is so hot, 14 degrees, centigrados degrees. Yeah. So in, in the winter, it's, it's good, 27, 30, for shooting, it's okay. And uh, was in the the location was around the Villa Montes and Ibibobo. It's 40, 40 kilometers uh, in to the border from Paraguay. So what that was the point of the war. That was very important for me because the space and the, all the landscape, it's part of the film, and it's also part of the soldiers. In every soldier. And, um, but uh, as I said before, the, the team, all the people who was working with me was very, very important. We were not uh, too much. We were 35 or 30 people working. And uh, it's a lot for me and for the Cinema Bolivian, Bolivian Cinema. But uh, <laughs> I know for the States is, is nothing. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> but we needed to, to shoot uh, very quickly, just in 22 days. Wow. Uh, yeah, every day um, was, we were very lucky because the, the weather was so, so good. Uh, and I really love the, I really love to work with the natural lights. So that was good for us. And Federico Lastra in the nights with the lights was amazing. Yeah, all the, yeah. the, the fire and that things. And also, also was good because around the, our location, there's nothing. So for the sound was incredible wow. for work with the sound, for work with the silence, for trying to, to, to make make uh, possible the concept of the silence. Yeah, talk a little bit. I mean, yeah, beautiful cinematography. Um, also, like the uh, you chose to frame it in the four the four three. Yes. Why why that choice? I'm curious. 
yeah, it's for three. Yeah, it's 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 very important. It's that is as as a static thing, it's important because if you if you make a composition in quarter but for three, you have to put the person in the center, mm -hmm. and the film it's uh, the indigenous, and the humans are in the center. In, it's not the weapons, it's not the enemy, it's not another thing, it's the human. And we need to look all the landscape through our actors, through our our people. And uh, that's the reason. And the composition is in profundity, not in the in the in this in the right or left. You must you must compose yeah. in a different way. Yeah. And you also have the the shots uh, it's not a close up, but it's a plano medium, no? Yeah. And, and you, you can identify, uh, you can sing, you can, you are able to singularize sites, I think is the word, singularize sites, the horror, singularizar uh, uh, the horror and the, all, the, all the sensations, all the emotions through our actors. Yeah, it makes it more, more intimate, more personal. Yeah, rather sure. than the widescreen, uh, you know, epic sort of scope. Yeah, it's, it's, it's our scale in a way, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, you can identify with the, the same scale of the humans. Because it's not that's the reason that I don't don't like to use the dollies or or special machines for make a film. Just you just need a camera and a camera a cinematographer Federico Laster. That's it. Yeah. But you yeah. need to be there. And the sounds also help too much for the quartet because if you have the four three frame, you have more space for the sound. So you have more space as a, as an audience for imaginations, for be part with your memories as an audience, with your memories in our field. Wow. Uh, talk about maybe some of your influences. I, I definitely felt like. Uh, all, you know, it was very reminiscent of, of Werner Herzog uh, and sort of some of his films, uh, Fitzcarraldo, Aguirre, The Wrath of God. Um, but I also, uh, I felt as being an American, I, I thought of the Japanese in World War II and some of the, the fighting that they did, you know, in Iwo Jima, where sort of they were left abandoned on, on these islands, you know, with no food, no water. Um, but in terms of uh, storytelling and the style, and maybe some other other stories, what were some of the influences on this film? Super well, uh, I don't know if I have a very strong influences from cinema. I, I, I really have a very good and really strong influences from the books, from the literature. Now, um, I, I, I read a lot and I, I, for example, for me, it was very, very important uh, Dostoevsky for the things, for the human issues. And also it's very important uh, Roa Bastos, Augusto Roa Bastos is a Paraguayan writer and uh, Juan Rulfo, it's a Mex Mexican writer. Yeah, they are very strong in imagination. And as you, when you say Bernard Herzog, um, in, for sure, it's a, it's a filmmaker that I, I respect a lot. And I'm so lucky that Bernard Herzog is it's, it's my friend. I work with her. I work it with, with him uh, in one, one film. So uh, the films that you mentioned are very strong. And for me, Bernard Herzog, it's a, it's a person who really wants to do the things and really believe in the things. Uh, for for make a, a films, you need to believe in yourself, and you need to believe in the people who is around. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that you can make a film. No? Yeah. That's a, a yeah. main idea and a main uh, lections uh, lection for me from the Bernard Herzog. But I also have a very um, an, an, an influences, and I really love the work of Jorge Sanginés, a Bolivian filmmaker, one of the most important filmmakers in Bolivia. In the same way, the the energy and the the questions that that he made for for make a film, and also it's uh, Glauber Rocha from Brazil, 
It's an amazing filmmaker. And Raul Ruiz from Chile. Most of my influences are from Latin America. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. because I live here sure. yeah. and I try to develop my life here. So I think. Yeah. Well, we're just about out of time, but I want to ask what you're working on next. Um, have you had time with the pandemic to to work on another script or, or develop anything or are you still kind of on hold? What, what, what's next for you? Uh, for me, well, now I'm, I'm writing a new, uh, a new film. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite the, the other phase of the Chaco. It will be in the 90s. The, the time will be in the 90s in Bolivia, in Santa Cruz. It's a city in the south of Bolivia. And uh, I take in a reference to one book from Maximiliano Barrientos, he's a Bolivian writer. I'm trying to make an adaptation of the film, of the book for a film. It's a dystopic film, and, uh, but it's, uh, it, it, it's also from the fear, because it's also from the, the things that we still uh, have in, in my country from, from the 2000s, 2003, 2005, 2008, and also 2019, um, the same problems. And I'm trying to make that things together. The name of the film is My Kingdom in This World. You know, it's Mi Reino en Este Mundo. And it's a very critical uh, film about my situation, this contemporaneity of Bolivia. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully, whenever that's done, we'll be able to play it at the festival and we'll finally be able to welcome you to Austin. Uh, but until then, uh, hope everything is going going well. Good luck, good luck with this film. Continued success. And uh, has it played? Uh, have you had a chance to watch it there in Bolivia in the audience and with it in a theater? Uh, yeah, we had the, the chance in the last the last part of the last year. Um, you know, but uh, with these restrictions, no? not too much people. Yeah. The, the newspaper and the, all the critics and the people was very, very interested and that's so good. And uh, I, I think we'll go on step by step and slowly and slowly the people will watch. And this year I hope from August, we are planning to make another kind of uh, projections with the open air and the people uh, not only in the cities, not only in the cinema theaters, mm -hmm. you know, in the communities, a small yeah. community yeah. and another in the countryside for see. Yeah. Well, we look forward to the new film, uh, uh, hopefully not too long, and we wish you success. And thank you so much for taking time to being here and um, for, for not only sharing this part of Bolivian history, but but really putting Bolivian cinema uh, on the map and hopefully bring it to a wider wider audience. Thank you, thank you, you Ernie and all the festival for your your so kindly and for your words and your opinion about my work. And I'm so happy to to show the, this film in in states because I think we we have the same problems and we need to recognize that. We need to recognize ourselves in the film, and the film is also watching us. So thank you. <laughs>